Hello to everyone and a very good morning. It is Wednesday and you've tuned in to our Morning Blessing program where every single day we bring to you a word of faith, a word of life and a word of hope. So stay in tune, especially if you are feeling downcast, unhappy, stressed, going through difficult days. I wanna make it very clear to all of you that you can make it and you will make it in life. You do not need to fear tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a blessing for you, even if circumstances seem to be against you. When we put our faith in the Word of God, this Word right here, everything becomes possible because the author of this Word is God and He is alive and He can change people's lives. Just as He changed this person that we're about to show you in our program, this person's life story is motivating, awesome, very intriguing. And if he, God, could change this person's life, he can also change yours. But before we do watch out the story, I'd like to uh, leave open for you our helplines. You can give us a call if you're in need of any prayers, counseling, advice, you're looking for some sort of guidance, feel free to give us a call on 9602-9837 and be sure that we are here to help you. If you wanna know more information about how we can help you, visit our website, uckg.org.au and we are here to enter into contact with you in full disposition to attend to your needs. So let us watch this story and as we come back, we are gonna be talking about something very important in the Word of God. Are you beating yourself up for having failed once again? Do you feel like no matter how many times you try, you always find yourself back at square one? We are here for you. Let us help you get out of the cycle. Give us a call now. But before coming to the church, I, yes, I suffered from depression. Um, mainly, um, I couldn't sleep at night. I'd be awake all night sometimes, feeling afraid, feeling depressed, feeling um, I wasn't going to achieve anything. I, tr I tried very hard to do well in studies, which I did, and I got very good jobs. And um, once I was in the jobs, um, I had problems with people, mainly because of my character, and I made lots of mistakes. Even though I got all the qualifications, I used to make mistakes. I also had uh, family problems. Everybody, nobody was talking to anybody. Didn't get along with my mother. My father died quite young, which affected me a lot. For um, many years afterwards, I would really just the mention of him and I'd start to cry even after years because I you know I really missed him as a young child you don't know what depression is as a long word you don't know what it means but I know I was I wasn't happy I just felt inferior that's it I felt inferior to everyone I always felt the least of the least you know in the family at school everywhere I went I just felt I was the worst. Things got worse and worse and worse as I tried to um, find happiness in partying, clubs, relationships, alcohol. And I'm just feeling more and more depressed um, and to the point I didn't want to live anymore. Feel, feeling suicidal, thinking, oh, what's the point? I'm never gonna amount to anything better if I wasn't around. It was something that was always there as long as I can remember. So it's something that I grew up with and it was there. I think most people looking at me wouldn't be able to tell I had to smile, um, but I was a very withdrawn person. Function well in a group of people, I was very shy. That was mainly after my son was born and then I felt so alone. And I'm thinking, oh, it's better I didn't carry on. I think, I think you know, should, I shouldn't be around. But then, of course, I had a child to look after and I didn't want to leave him by himself. I thought, okay, I'll kill him first and then I'll, then I'll kill myself. When I spoke to uh, the pastor, I offloaded everything I'd said about all the problems that I'd been facing. And he just said one sentence to me, the devil's trying to destroy you. I didn't know what demons were. Even though I believed in God, I didn't understand anything. The press started and then I heard people screaming. One person screaming next to me fell down. Next to me, somebody was screaming and then they fell down and I was feeling really scared. My heart was really beating and I was really feeling really scared and I held onto the chair in front of me. Somebody prayed for me. And after that, I was never the same person. All that oppression, heaviness, sadness came off me and the main thing was Jesus became real. 
He wasn't just somebody I'd read about. He was real. I could feel him. He was saying, you know, he's always been there. He was the reason why I was still alive. From that day, I've never stopped coming to the church. So the desire for alcohol and the wrong life and lots of relationships that went straight away. I didn't want to do partying or anything like that anymore. I just wanted to come to church. I just um, gave 100% of myself. Everything I heard, I took it on board. I didn't question anything. It said, come this day to do this. Okay, come this day, do this chain of prayer. Come to receive this oil, this water, everything. I didn't question it, I did it. And everything I did, my life was getting better and better and better. Even the things that I didn't even know could change, started to change. People were treating me differently. And I was getting more and more um, complex cases to work on. And they were being entrusted with more and more things. I started getting on with people. The shyness went. I had to fight for that though. I was so excited about this God I found. I wanted to evangelize. I wanted to do stuff. I thought I have to get rid of this shyness. So I had to push myself. But once I did it, you know, God gave me more and more courage and strength. Today, I, I have peace. I see myself differently. Before I could, whenever I looked at myself, I always saw things that were wrong or, you know, I didn't like the way I looked or anything. Now it's the opposite. I can see my value because God created me and I can see that I have value. So I first came to the church in 1995 and I've never left. I've been free from depression. I've had fights and battles, but it's not like before where it put me down. I, I have a strength, which is I go straight to God with everything. I go straight to God and he always 100% of the time delivers me from every, every situation. Today I'm free of depression and I have peace. What a wonderful story and testimony. It's amazing, isn't it? And the same can happen with you. This is why we invited you in this program to stay in tune because we believe that this is a stepping stone in order for you to get or have, receive a new story, a new life. By the end of this program, we will be blessing your water. We tell you in every program to prepare a glass of water so that you may consecrate it with us in prayer for it to be an element of power, purification, and healing. So please, by the end of this program, make sure that you have a water either a bottle or a glass of water prepared because we believe that it can really change your life through the power of faith, the use of faith, the workings of faith. And we're about to speak about this right now. In the Bible, it says the word of God, Matthew chapter 8, verse 23. When he got into a boat, Jesus, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with waves, but he was asleep. His disciples came to him and woke him up saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. You may be right now watching and listening and thinking the same thing. Save me, God, because I'm perishing. You may be having a cancer that's eating your body away. You may have an incurable disease that's just bringing you so much pain. You're even crying out to God, save me because I'm dying here. I'm perishing. You may be looking at your family at the moment and seeing everything going wrong and you're beginning to be suicidal or you're thinking about breaking up, sealing a deal with divorce and you're saying, save me, Lord, save me. Let it be known to you right now that if this is you, there is a solution for your problems. There is hope, a better end to them what you're having right now. And that is the following. Jesus said to them, why are you fearful? Oh, you little of faith. Why are you fearful? Put the fear aside for a moment, dear listener. Put the fear aside and start to use your faith. Believe really in this. If you don't have one of these, read it, get it, pray over it, pray in it, pray with it. But do not allow faith to be the dictator of your life. Do not allow faith to tell you what to do. Sorry, fear, my mistake, fear. Do not allow fear to be the dictator of your life. Fear to tell you what you should do, but faith. Faith in the word, because watch what happens. After they said, Lord, save us, we're perishing. Jesus said to them, why are you fearful, you little faith? 
Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And they all marveled. They were all shocked. And I understand why. Because when we are outside of the realm of faith, Seeing that the waves come to the calm, being in a great calm after such a tempest is a shocking thing because it's not normal. But those who are of faith, if you are of faith, you can achieve the abnormal, the good abnormal, miracles, transformations, healings, blessings. You can if you're in the field of faith. And we would like to introduce to you this field, this spiritual battlefield where we have victory, Because Jesus gives us this faith. So I want to tell you this, listen, if you are feeling confused, lost, you don't know what to do. It's time to use our faith and put fear aside. And I would like to pray with all of you now who may be feeling fearful at the moment in life. Stressed, down, sad, confused. Join me in this prayer, this prayer of faith that can make a turnaround for you. And I have a special invitation to give to you right after this. So if you can, please prepare the cup of water that we said. After this short video, we're going to pray and we're going to determine the transformation of your life. We'll be back real soon. Just as God works with faith, the devil works with doubt. Doubt is the main weapon of hell to weaken and destabilize people all over the world. We are bombarded daily by voices that come at us from all sides, with most carrying that invisible poison of doubt. What we have observed is that those who drink from this poison offered by the kingdom of darkness end up becoming insecure and terrified The voice to whom we give ear will dictate our actions and reactions. The Japanese scientist and researcher Masaru Emoto, in one of his most intriguing experiments, proved that words have the power to physically influence everything that exists. Emoto placed three servings of cooked rice in three different glass beakers, then covered them with water. Every day he would say, Thank you, I love you, to one of the beakers. I hate you, you were a fool, to the second one. And the third, he ignored completely. After a month, the result was surprising. The rice that received the kind words began to ferment, giving off a pleasant aroma. The rice in the second beaker, which received the negative words, became completely dark and rotten. And the third one, which was ignored, began to mold. Surely, this is thought-provoking. If a word caused such an effect with rice, can you imagine what this can do within a person? This is why we often see so many people overwhelmed by panic and fear, all because of a word they heard in one moment. Is it possible for a person to have peace when they have doubts? The only formula capable of shielding your faith is not listening to what might weaken you. Instead, Feed yourself with the word that comes from God, as this generates certainty, conviction and strength. Consequently, even when facing a difficult period, you will not be shaken because this will sustain you in any situation. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Only those who are in him will overcome like he did. From now on, give ear more to the voice of faith, because while the others pull you down, this one lifts you up. If your presence doesn't go with us, Lord, we don't want to leave this place. Lord, we need you near as we go from here to lead us by your love and grace. 
May your presence lead us every day. May your spirit lead the way. Lord, to you we call. Let your glory fall. And may your presence go with us. If your presence doesn't go, to leave this place Lord we need you near as we go from here to lead us by your love and grace may your presence fill us every day may your spirit lead the way Lord to you we call let your glory fall and may your presence go with us when we pray to God we can receive strength courage faith peace and anything we sincerely ask for Take advantage of this moment, close your eyes, and raise your thoughts to God. It's time to pray. My Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I have here in my hands this water, as well as your people, they have their water, and soon time they will drink. So I ask you that you consecrate right now this element for all those who may be fearful and stressed, for all those who may be feeling all over the place in their life. Things have been hard. They've been trying to move forward, but it seems like they're taking 10 steps backwards. They try to progress, but they only regress. They try to succeed, but then they, they mess up in what they want to do. I pray at this moment, Lord, that you transform this situation. Through the use of their faith, we believe, I believe that you can make the miracles happen, that the impossible can become possible and that you will be glorified through their lives. So Lord Jesus Christ, at this moment, come with your healing power and heal the sick. Come with your deliverance and remove captivity from the captive. Come right now and touch those who have been feeling like giving up and give them hope, give them strength, give them the faith to cross the sea, the tempest and overcome the great storm. This is my prayer, I pray. And you who are there watching and listening on the other side, you can say after me, Lord Jesus, when I drink of this water, purify me, heal me, deliver me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and praise God. You can drink of this water right now. And be blessed, be healed, be at peace. Amen. That's it, my dear friends. I'm sure that God has touched you in somehow and in some way. And if you are feeling good, that's a good sign. I believe that God has touched you. I believe that God has, is working with you. And it's good to continue to use your faith. This is why our church is open every day from 6.30 in the morning till late at night, 7 p.m., 8 p.m. at night, having four services a day, four services a day that you can join. For instance, Wednesday, today, Bible study. We just had our 7 a.m. We'll have our 10 a.m., 3 p.m., 7.30 p.m. You can join in any of those services or outside service times. You can just pop in, speak to one of the pastors or even make your own personal private prayer. The church is open for you. The doors of God's blessings are there waiting for you and you can just pop right in. But if you're a bit hesitant and you don't know much and you're a bit, you know, is it really going to help me? I would like more information. So give us a call. You can speak to one of us, our, our advisors or visit our website, 9602. Uh, sorry, uckg.org.au or give us a call 9602-9837. 
My dear friends, we're coming to the end of another program, but I wanna give that invitation for you to join us this Sunday. Every day we've been talking about the great gathering of faith using the blessed handkerchief. After this, after what I say right now, you're gonna see just a short description or a short video describing, explaining what we are doing every Sunday. And if you want God's presence, you want the spirit inside of you, you want a miracle to take place in your life, so join us. Let us use faith this Sunday, 9.30 in the morning in one of our branches. Our headquarters is located 153 Northumberland Street, Liverpool. But we have branches in Blacktown, also in Chatswood. That's New South Wales. We also have in Queensland and in Melbourne. But if you want more information, you can go on the website and see it there. Join us this Sunday. It will be a blessing for you. Otherwise, we come to the end of another program. It was a pleasure being with all of you. We are here for you. So feel free to get in contact with us, to visit us, to see us. And we're ready to bless you. May we see each other tomorrow in our live streaming program. May God bless your Wednesday. Bye-bye. The handkerchief that you'll receive is a point of contact for you to obtain what you determine by faith. Here's how to use this tool of faith. If you have someone who is sick, you can touch a part of their body or bed with the blessed handkerchief. If you are dealing with family problems, you can touch the picture of your entire family. If you are looking for employment or trying to set up a business, you can touch your CV, your tools, or your business plan with the blessed handkerchief. With all these scenarios, remember that you have to believe, pray, and determine the outcome you want to happen. We believe that God will honor your faith, so take the first step of faith and collect your handkerchief on Sunday at 9.30 a.m. at 153 Northumberland Street, Liverpool or at your local Universal Church.